Well, praise the Lord. Jesus is coming, and I'm ready. Amen. I hope you are too. But we know we see the signs of his coming are being prevalent everywhere. You know, this land, this nation, uh, this world is getting more polluted with sin by the day. Violence is filling the earth. Um, terrorism, perversion has happened. I think about what God, the Lord spoke right here in, in the woes unto in the book of Isaiah chapter 5. Verse 20, he says, Woe unto them who call evil good and good evil and puts darkness for light and light for darkness. Who puts bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. This the idea here that, that Judah, Israel had perverted the scripture that anymore that they didn't even know right from wrong. And I'm afraid this world today don't know right from wrong anymore. They don't know what's right. They don't know what's good. Uh, they put what's good for evil. Let's, let's think about the day's tenure. Let's think about the day's time. Uh, you know, the world wants to accept Islam, which is a false religion in itself. Uh, Islam is inspired from the pits of hell. And you know, but they want to treat it good. They want to say, oh, it's how great it is, how wonderful it is. But yet they're putting in place in these things on pedestals they're thinking oh how good it is and at the same time they're putting the work of christ they're saying oh these things are filthy this thing's bad that's what the lord was speaking they're calling evil good and good evil not only that uh, you see today we got a word that's coming up quite a bit and it, it, it's a word that you know it brought for, the bible says pride cometh before fall that word pride's what i'm talking about you see people prideful everything you know what in this day they're celebrating sin they're celebrating uh, their ungodliness and their filth the bible says pride cometh before a fall and you know and i think about in this day that we're living the thing they're celebrating the the ungodliness the filth the moral fabric of society is at a low right now it is at a low time road because they've rejected the word of god and they call evil good and good evil and they put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter and this is where we're at we're 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 in a cesspool a pollution of sin that has overridden in this time and i'm telling you jesus christ is surely coming when you think about the day what the things that is considered the norm it's no longer the abnormal but it's the normal that that, that they brought in sin I, I think about one of the a couple of the biggest abominations before me is the shedding of innocent blood and planned parenthood which is another holocaust another legalized murder clinic that that is being paid for by tax dollars around the nation and things right there but another thing that's drawn my attention is the celebration of the gay pride uh, the homosexual pride right there this thing is a stench it's an abomination before god first of all they take the rainbow they bought they stole it from the promise of Noah and tried to use it for their own agenda. I got news for that agenda, that LGBT uh, militant agenda. That's not your symbol. That is the symbol of God's promise to Noah that he would not destroy the world with water again like he did in that day. You know, the Bible tells us pride cometh before a fall. It was pride that brought forth Lucifer's fall from heaven. Uh, think about it. I will exalt. I will be like. I will ascend. I will be like the Most High. I will sit on the throne of God. You see, that's where we're at right now. And people just accept it like it's the norm. I, I want to speak out here for just a few minutes. Let me ask the city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I hope the police chief is listening to me. And I want to tell you, shame on you. Shame on you big time. You don't know right from wrong and let me tell you I respect the police department I stand for the police department but listen what they're doing there with the symbols they're putting on their car is ungodly it is unvile where they're celebrating the gay pride agenda let me tell you when are you going to put a cross on your car and celebrate the Jesus Christ when are you going to put a, a sign that says in God we trust on our instead of putting this homosexual pride uh, that we celebrate that let me tell you that's just you, you people say well we we got to have freedom from uh, all of that but yet they can put this uh gay pride the homosexual agenda and celebrate it my lord we're in trouble in this nation just like McDonald's and some of their their news 
of French fry boxes are coming out celebrating gay pride. Everywhere you go, you see people looking with pride, pride, pride at the, the homosexual. Let me tell you something. The homosexual agenda is nothing to take pride about. You'll find out when you read the Bible that God destroyed two cities because of it. You say, why are you pre picking on the homosexuals. I'm not picking on the homosexuals. I'm calling them to repentance. I'm calling them to tell them if they don't repent and turn from their sin, they're going to burn in the flames of hell. It's just that simple. In, in a nation that exalts sin is a reproach to any people. A sin is a reproach to any nation. And when you begin to celebrate sin and you begin to take pride in sin, whether it's the homosexual agenda, abortion, legalized drugs, you see that going on now. I'll hit that later on and some of these other things that's going on, you'll see that it is nothing more than you'll see it invites the judgment of God upon it. In this nation, the people need to come to hear the word repentance. To go back and prove my point about the homosexual agenda. It got so bad in Sodom and Gomorrah. Let's look right here in Genesis chapter 19. And, and let's start in verse 1. And, two, and there came two angels at Sodom at evening. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot seeing them rose to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face towards the ground. And he said, Behold now, my Lord turns in, I pray you, your servant's house. And tarry all night and wash your feet. And you shall rise up early and go on your way. And they said, No, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast, did bake, bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, can pass the house round about, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into your house to you in this night? Bring them out that we may know them. Meaning they wanted to have a homosexual relationship. They wanted to rape the angels of the Lord. That's just the way to put it right there. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut, shut the door after them. And he and said, I pray you, brethren, do not do so wicked, not so wickedly. Behold, I have two daughters which have not known men. Let me, and I pray you, bring them out unto you and do to them as good in your eyes. Only unto these men do do nothing therefore they came they under the shadow of my roof and they said stand back and they again the one fellow came in sojourn and he will need to judge now we deal worse with you than with them and they pressed sore upon him even lot and came near to break the door but the men put their hand and pulled lot into the, the house to them and shut the door Listen, little did these perverts know who they were dealing with right here. They were dealing with the angels of the Lord. And they smote the men who were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. You know, even after that, even after that, even after their blindness, they were so perverted that they still wanted to do this. And the men, in verse 12, and the men said unto Lot, Have you... Had here any besides son-in-law and your sons and daughters and whatsoever you have in the city, bring them out of this, into this place, for we will destroy this place. Because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Sodom was getting ready to be destroyed. Listen, right there, and we go on into right here and we see some things that happen the bible says goes on into verse 24 right there then the lord rained upon sodom and Gomor upon gomorrah brimstone and fire from the lord out of heaven and he overthrew the cities and all the plain and the inhabitants of the cities that which would grew upon the ground but his wife looked back from behind and she become a pillar of salt and Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord, and he looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah and towards all the plain, land of the plain. And behold, lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of furnace. And it came to pass that God destroyed the, the cities and the of the plain, but God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out into the midst of the overthrow, which overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. Right there, you see perversion. 
You see, God brought the judgment down upon them. You see, what's going on today, what, this celebration of this homosexual pride, this militant LGBT community that wants to push the doors in and have their own rights, that wants to be accepted. Let me tell you, society may accept you, but let me tell you, as long as you're in your sin, as long as you ain't in the Lamb's book of life and you're continuing on in that sin, you'll never, you will not be accepted before God. If you want to be accepted before God, it don't matter what sin you're in, you've got to be born again. There's got to be a new creation there. There's got to be a change there. What are you saying? You telling me, you saying, preacher, that if, if they're bound in sin, if they're bound in that lifestyle, they ain't going to heaven. The Bible says they'll burn in hell. Plain and simple. But there is still hope. And that, that hope is Jesus Christ. That hope uh, is the one that will make you born again. That, that hope, that being born again means there is a change in your lifestyle. Let me tell you, who the Son sets free is free indeed. Uh, let me tell, don't believe this lie of the devil. Be who you want to be. Uh, to accept who you are. Let me tell you, if you're lost in sin, you're on your way to hell. It's just that plain and simple. But I want you to tell, tell you this evening that Jesus Christ is still alive. Jesus Christ is still changing lies. Jesus Christ is still the answer. Jesus Christ is still the hope. Uh, folks, let me tell the saints of God out there, it's time to start praying. It's time to get read up. It's time to get hungry for God. Uh, time is short. You see where we're at. Just as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man again, is what Jesus said in the book of Luke. Uh, listen, uh, listen, God's going to overthrow this. God's going to overthrow this, but I like what God told right here. Make haste, escape quickly, for I cannot do anything till you come out of Sodom. Uh, listen, that God said, Lot, uh, when you come out, I'm going to wipe this out. Uh, when you come out of Sodom and Gomorrah, I'm going to burn it with fire and brimstone. And that's exactly what's going to happen. I believe the very moment the church is removed, the very moment the people of God is took out of here, the judgment of God will fall. Uh, folks, it's time to wake up. It's time to get ready. It's time to quit celebrating these ungodly activities. It's time to get quit and start celebrating Jesus Christ. Start celebrating one who can set you free. Uh, let me tell you, I heard Montel Williams make the comment. He had it on Twitter. Let me tell you something, Montel. I hope you listen to this. Listen, you need to re-examine your faith. You made the comment you celebrate gay marriage because it because of your faith. Well, your faith ain't in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because God never celebrates sin. We ain't called to celebrate sin. We celebrate when the sinner repents and turns from their wicked way. Folks, let me tell you, our nation's in trouble. Our country's in trouble. But the Bible tells us where sin abounds, the grace of God abounds that much more. Folks, I'm telling you, you'll see this month in June, they'll be celebrating the homosexual agenda, and I'm going to be preaching against it. Amen? And I'm telling you, they'll be celebrating the pride and all of that, but I'm going to remind them, pride cometh before a fall. Don't take pride in your sin. Don't celebrate your sin because your sin's going to send you to hell. Amen? Your rejection of Jesus Christ will send you to hell. Who do you celebrate? I'm calling on the city of Pittsburgh to take these things off of these police cars. I'm calling that police chief out to put a cross, put in God we trust on that police car right there. And yeah, let me hit this one right here. And just a few weeks ago, the New York Times, these atheists, took out a full-scale ad saying, Mr. Trump, we're not a country, not all of us, are, we're not a country of believers. First of all, you need to find, figure out how this country was started. Our laws are based upon the Ten Commandments of God right there, Judeo-Christian Judeo values. Second of all, let me tell them atheists something. We're not a country of fools. Uh-oh. We're not a country of fools. What do you mean? The Bible says the fool is set in his heart. There is no God. And I can promise you, 
You may not want to admit it, but you're going to bow. You're going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Uh, Folks, let's wake up. Let's get ready and understand that Christ is coming. Let's wake up and realize we're in the last day. Let's stand up to this anti-God agenda that wants to accept everything that's contrary to the Word of God. We're not going to accept abortion. We're not going to accept gay marriage. We're not going to accept drugs and alcohol. We're not going to accept these things that go contrary to the Word of God. We're going to pray for the sinner to repent. We'll give lead them to Christ. We're going to love the sinner, but we're going to stand and hate the sin. That's the way it's got to be. Folks, let me tell you, if you love the sinner, you're going to give them the truth. Amen? If you don't want them to perish, you're going to give them the gospel and tell them the truth. It's either Christ or the highway. You'll either accept Christ or you'll perish. You'll either spend eternity with Christ or you will be separated from Him. Folks, let's wake up and realize where we are. Let's stand up. Give the church the voice. Remember, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Uh, Let me tell you, Muslim, I'm calling you to repent. I'm calling you to tell you that Jesus Christ is alive. I'm calling to tell you Muhammad is not the way. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father except Except by the Son. It's that simple. I'll deal more with Islam in the next few days. Let's get where we're at. It's time to wake up. It's time for the church to stand up and not be ashamed of the gospel, but to preach the gospel. Well, you say people may not want to hear it. I don't care what they don't want to hear, it's what they need to hear. Amen. Let's hope everyone has a good day and get into the house of God. Get into your word. Be in church tonight. And we glory we we want to thank our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we pray that once somebody will hear this message and turn to the Lord. Thank you. God bless.